since Cyberpunk 2077 was first announced in May of 2012, four of my friends have found a partner, gotten married and had children. It's arguably now one of the most hyped games of recent history, but does Cyberpunk live up to those expectations and was it worth the wait? During this video, I'll explain everything you need to know to develop your own opinion of this huge open world story focused RPG from CD Projekt Red with as few spoilers as humanly possible. Let me start with this, Cyberpunk 2077 is my kind of game. I adore narrative driven RPG experiences above all else, so this review is going to be from the perspective of someone who doesn't need the game to break the mold in order to enjoy it. However, that also means that if you have the same taste, my opinions will better inform you. If you're looking for a different perspective, I recommend checking out the other reviews out there. Cyberpunk 2077 is, without a doubt, the most incredible journey I have been a part of in recent memory. I say a part of because above anything else, in so many ways, Cyberpunk 2077 gives you the choice to write your own path. It's not perfect, but its imperfections are relative to a freckle on the ass of a supermodel. It does so much and gives you so much that what brings it down is ultimately forgiven. Does it meet the wild expectations of gamers? No. Is it fun? Incredibly. Ultimately, that's what matters. In Cyberpunk 2077, you take the role of V, a mercenary out to make a name for themselves in the simultaneously beautiful and terrifying Night City. Extenuating circumstances need you to make a choice to fix what's slowly killing you. Choice is everywhere. From the moment you press new game, you're offered a choice that ultimately shapes your journey your life path. You can either pick Street Kid, Nomad or Corpo, each offering a unique prologue. After the prologue, your life path still affects the game, offering unique dialogue options during conversations, missions and outcomes. You get to decide how your character looks as well, even though this rarely shows up during gameplay. You also choose how you want your character to play by allocating attribute points. These shape how you'll experience Night City and your quests, as there are always a handful of ways to approach any problem. If you invest in intelligence, you can hack your way through situations installing demons that can literally make enemies kill themselves. If you invest into body, you can beat your enemies into a pulp or even rip turrets out of their stands and tear through your enemies like Rambo. Every skill has a huge tree of perks you can invest into that further customize your character. If you want to know more about attribute skills and perks, check out my video below which should be released soon. My first character invested in Reflex, Cool and Tech. He functioned like a sneaky pistol based hitman. Even after beating the game, my character more or less kept this role. You can reset perk points, but it costs quite a lot and money is very valuable in the game. I found that switching to weapon types I haven't invested in wasn't punishing, though some will have attribute requirements. During conversations you may get different dialogue options due to your life path, but may also get some due to your attributes. I really felt like my initial choices shaped how I played, even until the conclusion of my playthrough. Therefore how you build your character matters, and if you're anything like me, you'll find yourself wanting to replay the game with a different path and build. It took me roughly 6 hours to get through the prologue and truly start the game. From this point, Night City is completely open to you. You can go anywhere in the city and take any mission. It's a truly massive sandbox, but unlike the Witcher series, the map isn't flat, especially in the central parts of the city. There are multiple layers of verticality, so the game is extremely dense in multiple senses. You can't walk for more than 20 seconds without running into something to do. The sheer volume of quests you have access to is mind blowing, but the volume means very many will get lost in the pile. The problem is exacerbated when you see the quest log, which isn't very intuitive. I'm sure this will be improved by modders or in DLC, but it's not the easiest thing to navigate. Intentionally quests don't show you their rewards, difficulty beyond a vague description or give you more details. This is so you experience what the quest narrative has to offer instead of taking a quest with expectations. It works, I was frequently blown away by side missions and surprised with what I'd earned. More so, I was surprised that what I did or who I met came up through other quests. If you go through the mainline quest without doing any side content, you'll have a wholly different experience than someone who did a few side objectives and a wholly different experience to someone that did the same as you but chose different outcomes. I'll talk more to this soon. 
When you get your first vehicle and start exploring, you'll soon be called by fixers who offer you jobs and even sell you cars and bikes when they're made available. You'll be using your phone a lot in Cyberpunk as a refreshing way to accept quests and hand in completed ones while still exploring or moving towards your next objective. You can even call friends you've made to check in and chat. Further details will be sent via SMS and you can respond to these as well. I just wish the same intuitiveness shown in the phone mechanics were shown in the quest log. When you first start exploring RTD, you might need to take a few seconds to compose yourself or even refrain yourself from entering photo mode every few meters. It's a beautiful game. I played with a 3080 and I ran the game with mostly high settings and ray tracing on. At the start, I was forced to play without a day one patch which did bring some bugs. There were a fair few T-poses, artifacts and random problems, none of which really distracted me from the experience. I can't be sure if all of these will be fixed at release. Cyberpunk isn't the prettiest game ever made, but it's one of the most visually impressive. The sheer scale is phenomenal. More than that, the love and detail that's gone into every single part of the game continues to amaze me even after over 120 hours of playtime. Every dirty back alley looks different, every vehicle is lovingly created, like they're from a Gran Turismo game. Even the weapons and items all have the finer details you don't come to expect from an RPG. I found myself admiring the wet mud on a road. You can tell CD Projekt Red have poured over 8 years of love into this title. Driving feels more like GTA than it does Gran Turismo though, it's mostly arcadey, but each vehicle handles drastically different. Naturally it feels better on a controller than a keyboard, but both are fine. The tiny Mai Mai handles like it should, weaving through traffic, and the highest end expensive sports cars absolutely fly. When you jump from a Porsche 911 back to an Archer, then to an Arendite, you feel like you're playing a different game. You'll get lost in the sheer volume of choice when it comes to gear, weapons and cyberware, all having their own rarity from common, rare, epic and legendary, each being stronger than the last. Also you can find iconic versions which come with their own look and modifier. These are usually attached to an enemy or offered as a reward. Alongside all these choices are, you guessed it, more choices. You can equip mods to your items and gear like scopes, silences, extra padding, non-lethal rounds, electric damage and more. You can craft almost everything as well given you have the materials and blueprints, even iconic items. Using your attributes, skills, perks and items you can engage in combat. My initial thought after seeing the game played by others is that the combat will be stiff and the enemies will feel like bullet sponges. This is not true. What you need to understand first and foremost is that Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG through and through. If you don't invest at all in combat, you'll be quite bad at it. If you do though, you'll feel like you're playing a well-made first person shooter. It's not the level of Doom Eternal, but it holds its own against games like Call of Duty. There are crits, bonuses, elemental damage types and more going on behind the scenes, but it feels fluid and natural and is held together by the incredible sound design. Melee feels powerful, ranged combat feels natural and playing as a hacking focused netrunner felt very in theme. The only gripe I have is that the stealth is quite mediocre. Don't expect a Hitman like experience in this regard. It works and it's fun to sneak around but enemies aren't the smartest. That carries over to police. Kill an NPC and a bounty will be on your head, like in GTA, however only a short time out of sight and the police will give up. Night City doesn't care as much about your violence as Liberty City does. Also, NPCs won't, won't hesitate to run you over if you try crossing the road. The density of NPCs in the world realistically changes with the time of day and weather system, however, they don't act as realistic. Doing things like cowering in fear if you shoot one of them 100 meters away. The game is not incredibly hard. You will die if you stand out in the open too long or approach a situation in the wrong way. On normal though, a seasoned gamer shouldn't have too much difficulty. So in this case I recommend switching to hard or very hard for your second playthrough, but the game isn't only about combat. You may go hours without fighting anyone and you'll find yourself having no issue with that as you can change this whenever you want by stepping into the many events on the map, but you are encouraged to take your time and explore. If you do so, you can collect tarot cards around the city, as well as shards which contain bits of lore and interesting stories if you spend the time to read them. There's a lot to see and do. There's also entertaining things to listen to on the radio and TVs around the world. There's a ridiculous amount of audio in the game from music, TV shows, to the sheer volume of dialogue. I use the word volume because of its duality. 
I encountered a few situations where NPCs pitch and volume would change during the same conversation. One minute there's a filter over it, the next there isn't. Perhaps COVID made recording hard, but there are definite inconsistencies. The voice acting talent is the best that money could buy, but therein lays the problem. For example, Laura Bailey at this point feels very overused. She voices quite a few characters and even though she's one of the best voice actors around, every female sounding like Jaina Proudmoore often gets distracting. Notably, I was very impressed by the Japanese voice acting, which shows up quite often. But the sound design is phenomenal. You feel the weight of most weapons because of the well-crafted sounds. You feel the roar of a sports car and appreciate the effort that went into it. You get pumped during difficult fights because of the music that picks up during it. Audio pulls all the different aspects of the game's themes together and is one of those things you notice when it's wrong, but don't appreciate when it's fantastic. As you explore the world, you'll encounter random events. Gangsters robbing stores, cops fighting criminals, even a wife catching her husband on Jig Jig Street picking up joy girls. Some offer rewards for intervening, some just want you to listen and watch. It helps the world feel more alive and though it isn't as in-depth as the side or main content, it takes two steps forward in immersing you in a living, breathing world. Until it doesn't. You see, these events seem predetermined rather than random. In multiple playthroughs, I saw the exact same situation in the exact same spot. The wife catching her husband happened multiple times in the same spot every time I visited. Some conversations repeating when I played the same area. This took me a step back from the immersive atmosphere CD Projekt Red worked so hard to create. But the choices are there for you to take. Which quests do you do? What order? How do you approach them? Do you go stealthily? Guns blazing? Call for an NPC's help? Your choices matter in how the story plays out. The problem is, you won't always know exactly how your choices impacted things. For example, choosing a dialogue option, even the life path or attribute based ones, don't give you a clear indication if they did anything. If the NPC liked or disliked it, if it opened the door of another quest or closed one off. Sometimes there are clear results, but other times you'll be left wondering. Until, of course, you replay the game, wherein all the things you did before suddenly make more sense in how they affected the overall narrative. Like I said before, this is not a game you should play through once. It deserves, even demands, multiple runs. When you take into account that a single playthrough can take anywhere from 30 to 100 plus hours, it's a tall order. Cyberpunk isn't a meal, it's the whole restaurant. It's something that expects you to take your time and taste everything it has to offer. If you buy the game and only hit the main quest line, your experience will be soured in more ways than I can say without diving into spoiler territory. But like I mentioned, side content feeds into the main and the main quest line isn't very long on its own. Main quests are richly deep and all have multiple outcomes spread over multiple ways to approach them. The Maelstrom mission we've all seen showcased during the gameplay reveal, for example, has over a dozen ways to complete it based on your choices. You need to buy a bot from some gangsters. You can either buy the bot with your own money and walk out of there with no bloodshed, you can shoot the joint up, execute the leader first, use a plagued credit chip, take the plague off the chip and use that, and much more. This is only the icing. Side quests aren't left by the side though. Miraculously, they all feel unique and enjoyable. You get introduced to a host of NPCs and have to undertake tasks with them or for them. Not once did I feel like content repeated. Every single quest feels unique, mostly because of the wonderful storytelling. You won't be sent to kill 20 boars. Even the quick and simple side quests have charm. For example, you'll see a guy grabbing his crotch screaming for help. You can do your best to help him by driving him to a ripper dock while cracking jokes, but will forever have his number saved in your phone as the flaming crotch man. The longer ones are multi-layered and usually result in a major reward, like a car or a relationship with a lover, but not everything is available to you at the start. You'll need street cred to unlock the best gear, quests, cyberware and options. You'll get street cred by doing things around the world that would increase your notoriety, like finishing quests and taking out wanted men. I only started receiving calls from Night City's best and brightest when my street cred rose to that of John Wick. This encourages you to complete all you can as both street cred and money, which is called Euro Dollars or Eddies for short, is extremely valuable. Eddies are hard to come by and are used for most everything, from buying a new ride to cyberware, weapons, mods and more. You even need money for some quests to hire the right person. I found money was far more valuable in Cyberpunk 2077 than it was in other RPGs like the Elder Scrolls series. 
to the point that if I did particularly hard quests and was rewarded with a lot of cash, it felt like a six year old getting a $5 note from their parents and let loose in a candy store. What should I buy? Will it be that shiny new ride? Will it be some sweet chrome for my arm? A new cyber heart? Maybe I should pay back what I owe to my mate. These are more choices that need to be made since eddies are so limited. The side effect of undertaking quests is that you meet and develop relationships with new faces. If nothing else, the wonderfully and thoughtfully written characters of Night City are the highlight of Cyberpunk 2077, each one gripping you in different ways and leading you through the narrative by the hand. You can skip through dialogue, but I never even thought to do it. In fact, I actively wanted to dive deeper into characters and see how things would play out. I found myself often at crossroads, having to decide between logic, morals, and my heart. Something a video game hasn't done to me in a long time, and that's mostly due to the fact that the characters are so gripping that projecting myself into the character of V is almost impossible not to do. Usually, I do fairly well at predicting where a story is headed, who to trust, and what to choose. But in Cyberpunk, that all went out the window and I found myself terrified I would make the wrong choices. Some of that is due to what we discussed previously, but most of it is due to the writing. The writers want you to not know what to do and how to react. They give you clues, but ultimately, you're on your own. You're meant to feel a certain level of anxiety over the situation you're in, and they nail that right in its fat head. Even now, I'm dying to talk to someone about my experiences, so hurry up and finish the game so I can talk to you. Speaking of relationships with characters, the adult seems are relatively tame from what we're led to believe. You don't see any penises at all besides your initial character creator, and big really isn't big. You do, however, see giant dildos almost everywhere. Some three feet tall, some only the size of your forearm. You see boobs, but they're rigid and small as well. In a world where you can change everything, it's surprising that breasts don't get much bigger than a B cup. The scenes with NPCs you invest time into are much better than the ones you get from playing with a joy girl or guy, but the better payoff is seeing how your relationship grows with them rather than the actual scene. In this regard, CD Projekt Red nails it. Relationships feel organic and natural. I just know many people are expecting more choice in this area, and you don't seem to get much choice, at least for a male, in who you get to romance. This is, however, a very adult game. The themes are dark, and that can't be overstated. There were points where I felt disturbed by the things happening, not in a vomit kind of way, but in the realization that this kind of darkness exists in the world, that not everything is a happy rainbow unicorn candy fart. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Cyberpunk is an amazing game with a few hiccups here and there. It's ambitious, heart pounding, and truly worth a look if you love RPGs. So thanks for watching. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled to Slash Dantics for everything else Cyberpunk. Ciao, friends.